Good morning, Matt here from West Coast Shaving's Daily Shave video series. And for today's Daily Shave, I'm gonna be doing another vintage straight razor shave and soap review. Today's shave is gonna focus on Barrister and Mann's Classic. So this is the reserve base. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that when I'm shaving. The brush is this West Coast Shaving Infinity brush. This is made by American artist, uh, Matt Marting, he is formerly known as Brush Guy. Um, beautiful pores. It's a 26 millimeter uh, badger knot, finest badger. For the razor, I'm using this vintage Tory. So this is probably around the turn of the century razor. It's five eighths, and it has this interesting design with a this fluting here below the spine. Uh, with that, I'm gonna get started on the shave with the face. Fill the scuttle, shake out the brush. <clears throat> and for the soap. So I'm going to scoop out about half a teaspoon. That's what I normally use. It's about that amount. It used to be, when I first got it, it was a lot softer. But it's pretty common for these uh, hot processed soaps. Is that over time they'll firm up a bit. So I'm just pressing it down into my skull. Shake out the brush, and I'm just gonna go back and forth on the scuttle like this, and load, load the soap. So uh, right off the puck here, and as I'm lathering it, the scent strength is about, I'd say a six out of 10. It's a little bit above medium. And it's, um, as the name suggests, it's a kind of a classically inspired scent. So uh, according to the website, it's uh, inspired by 60s style cologne, men's cologne. Uh, and I 100% get that. It has a definite uh, 60s kind of vintage feel to it. I believe it's modeled after Sun Up by Gillette, which is now discontinued or it's been discontinued for a while, I think. Um, and primarily I'm getting, I'm just adding water. This is actually a thirsty soap. Primarily I'm getting um, a citrus, so a lemony citrus, and it's a bit actually kind of bitter smelling uh, with some oak moss and lavender. There's sandalwood too, but I mainly get the citrus and the kind of green mossiness from the oak moss. There's overall kind of a powderiness to it and a soapiness. But I like the scent. I'm gonna add more water. So I'd also suggest there's an interview uh, on the website for West Coast Shaving that has uh, Will Carius from Barristorm Man. He talks about this soap, the soap base in particular, tricks to lathering it, and um, he talks about a little bit what he's trying to achieve with this. So it's kind of interesting, this base, this reserve base, so it's a whole other line of soap base apart from their Excelsior line. And then they also have Barrister Man, a soft heart series, which is uh, for limited release soaps. But this one came out, I think around 2017, it's been out for a while and it's been consistent, but, um, <clears throat> you know, there's a few coarse soaps. There's, there's the Fougere, the, there's a lavender one, um, the classic, and then there's a reserve cool, which is kind of like a blue type, Floyd blue type scent. And there's a spice one that's meant to be like old spice and then, uh, waves, which came out later which I think is an aquatic, but 
I haven't uh, smelled that one. So if you watch the interview uh, with Will, he talks about uh, the soap base and how this base, what he was trying to do, which is pretty interesting. So some people have difficulty uh, lathering their soap due to the hard water. So I don't happen to have hard water where I live, but um, this soap was specifically designed so that it would work with hard water. So if that's a problem for you, you might want to check out this base. I never really have a problem lathering it. It's feeling very, very dense right now. So I'm still going to add some more water to it. I'm just going to drip some into the brush here, into the face of the brush like that. And I add it about a teaspoon. I'm going to add a little more because it's still feeling kind of pasty. In the video, he recommends uh, lathering off the puck. I don't happen to lather that way. I, I like to use a bowl and I have my method where I scoop out the same amount, no matter what soap it is, and just gradually add water to it out of the bowl, load it, and then do a face lather. But he recommends, I think 25 swirls inside of the tub if you like to lather in the tub with a, with a wet brush. And I think I'm good to go. I have a nice, slick, dense lather. And if you watch the video, you'll see that this lather was produced by the soap. It's not your typical, um, let's say traditional lather, which gives a very peaky kind of egg white, uh, egg white peak kind of appearance. And Will actually talks about that, why that is. And a large part of it has to do with the choice of the fats that's used in the soap base. So he talks about like Martin de Condra, which is kind of the prototypical uh, classic Peaky Lather or Velobra, where the, uh, the main ingredient they use before they turn it into soap is the uh, steric acid. So it's a solid at room temperature. You know, it's derived from coconut oil. And in the case of the reserve base, he's using uh, some polyunsaturated fats. He mentioned castor oil, among other things. made a conscious decision to use some of these oils because he's looking for other properties in the shave soap. You know, as far as post-shave, slickness, moisturizing. And it did kind of change the paradigm a bit for shave soaps. So, uh, and you're definitely seeing that train uh, trend still today where There's less of a focus on having a, let's say a visually appealing lather or a big thick lather. And there's more of a focus on how is the soap performing. And I feel like this soap really kicked it, up, kicked it off or kicked off that trend. So you end up with um, a dense and you end up with soft peaks. <clears throat> it's also because it is thirsty, it's common that you're gonna have to add water as you go to the shave. You can, you may have to, um, you know, if you're feeling that it's a bit pasty. So right now I'm feeling between the bristles, I can feel it's a little bit pasty. So I might, so if I go ahead and add a little bit of water to the brush again, and then just build it up a little bit. 
it'll coax some of the lather, lather out of the brush. Look at that. Nice. So for today's tip of the day, I'm gonna give a straight razor tip on the backhanded technique. Um, basically, if you ever get shaved at the barber, a straight shave, they use this technique a lot. And part of it is they don't wanna, you know, instead of reaching across the customer's face, they'll kind of turn the customer's head and they'll use a backhanded stroke like this and shave away from themselves. So <clears throat> when you're shaving yourself, you know, as far as seeing other people who straight shave videos, etc., I don't see a lot of people using it, but I think there are a couple of places where you might be able to use that technique during your straight shave. And for me, that's shaving the right side of my face with my right hand. Now, a lot of people I notice, now that I can watch other people uh, on YouTube, see how they shave, straight razor shavers, a lot of them like to switch hands, go with their left hand, and just like I shave this part of my, my neck, this is my left side, They'll do the kind of like mirror image on the right with their left hand. Um, but if you're not so good with your left hand, like I'm not, I try to minimize as much as possible. I think using this technique might work for you. So um, basically I'm pinching the razor between the tang. <clears throat> I mean, pinching the tang between my thumb and first two fingers. And then I'll loop my, my pinky around the tail just for a little stability. And I'm basically using that backhanded technique, uh, arcing my wrist like this. And I think it does another thing. It also uh, works really well to keep the blade flat as you're going more against the grain on your neck. And it follows the curve because you have this concavity on the neck under the jaw. And if you use this motion, it will naturally follow that curve of your neck. So I think it's a very natural way to shave this part. And very comfortable. And for me, it's not awkward at all. But I think um, if you're starting out or you want to try a new way to shave this part of your face, um, it might be worth trying this out. But maybe switching hands is more comfortable for you, or, um, you know, maybe that feels more natural for me. It does not, but, you know, that's kind of the beauty of YouTube. Now, when I first started straight razor shaving, there wasn't, uh, there wasn't YouTube. <laughs> So if you wanted advice, you'd have to go to forums, boards, and it's just not the same when you have someone try to describe what they do versus actually seeing it. So if you wanted to do something, it really involved just a lot of trial and error. And hopefully with these videos and tips, I can save you some of that trial and error. You can just see what, what has worked for me or what other people definitely uh, it's a good idea to look at many different people, see how they do their shave. And try to take away what works best for you. So another place you can use that backhanded technique is when you're shaving south to north. <clears throat> On the right side you can just kind of follow it up so I can demonstrate that as well 
even though that's maybe not part of my normal my normal sequence. Or maybe I'll do that on a cleanup. Oh, leather is flying. And I'm just gonna pull out some of the leather from the brush here, like so. This 26 millimeter knot, it's very dense, it holds onto a lot of leather. <clears throat> and I'll do my against the grain pass, where it's actually kind of more of like an across the grain towards my chin. razor is nice and smooth. I'm finding that these wedgier type vintage razors really are smooth and do a great job of cutting through my thick, my thick beard. Oh, let's get the side here. This is where I'm switching hands. Again, it's not the most comfortable for me. So I try to limit it. I limit the switching of the hands as much as possible. If you really can't use your left, you can always go like this. So you kind of grab your ear and you can go across this way using your right. You can get the jawline here too, like that. That works equally as well. path where I just go down again on my goatee area. Not much to clean up. Here's an area I like to go, again, south to north, below that lower lip, and I'll pull down on the chin, and then go ahead, use the backhanded stroke. It's kind of hard to show my hand in the way, but. On this area, I'm just letting my bottom lip be totally loose and stretch with the other hand. Maybe a little bit of cleanup here under the jaw. Used up all my lather. There we go. And I'll just demonstrate going maybe on the cheeks here. Using that backhand again. So here, I'm doing a little bit of a J hook on the jawline because my hairs tend to go this way. So if I really want to get it close and against the grain of the straight, I can hook it a bit. Again, using that backhand, and then I can just follow it up. So I want to get a little bit closer on the cheeks. Again, with that same backhanded grip. I did cover this technique before on one of my other videos. I think it was the Mitchell's Wool Tat video. And I called it the Godfather technique. I don't think it caught on. But it's basically a backhand. Same thing here. I'm just going to do a little hooking to get a little closer under the jaw. And if it feels uncomfortable, try tilting your chin down a little bit and stretching with the other hand. That tends to make it a little bit more comfortable for me.
There we go. Pretty good. I have the original bottle. Let me show. It has this really cool design on it. The bottles have changed. I don't know if the juice has actually changed too, but this is a nice aftershave. It does have alcohol, but it doesn't really burn me as much. It's maybe not such a high concentration of alcohol. It has other skin food in it. Really like the properties of this uh, splash. And the scent does, it is fairly strong and it'll stay with you for at least maybe four or five hours. At least that's what I found with this one. Um, and again, it's the same scent as the soap. It's nice, bright, citrusy, definitely has a retro feel to this, uh, to this scent. Um, but that's the classic scent. That's my shave with this vintage Tory from Worcester, Massachusetts and the Infinity Brush, West Coast Shaving Infinity Brush by Matt Marty. Hope you enjoyed the Straight Razor Shave today and the review of Classic. Have you tried these reserve soaps? Do you have hard water? Does it, uh, does it work well in hard water? Please let me know in the comments. Tell me what you think of the soap and have you tried this backhand technique ever before? Let me know what you think of the tip. Thanks for joining me.